Good morning. It's Sunday morning, and here we are together at home. Uh, it it's, uh, certainly has gone on longer than what I had first anticipated in the beginning. But back and way back on, I think it was the 8th of March, that we began having to be together at home. Uh, but as long as we are together at home, we can still be together in spirit. And we certainly can be together in prayer. And I, that, that's one of the reasons that I chose the Lord's Prayer as, as a, uh, a series for the next, say, the next six weeks. That even though we are together at home, we are able to keep our thoughts and our prayers together. And we are in one spirit. And, and that's, that's so powerful to me that we are never truly isolated and alone. Uh, if, that's, if that's the greatest lesson we can get out of this series, man, that, that wouldn't be that bad if that were the only one that we got. We are together in spirit with God and each other. So I'm going to be reading uh, from the sixth chapter of Matthew uh, where we find the, the words I'm going to be, the, the scripture I'm using uh, for the Lord's Prayer. And this morning... I'm going to begin with just the ninth verse. So hear the word of the Lord. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I Actually, I'm just going to, you know, we're not even going to get the whole way through that ninth verse this morning. I think we're going to go with just pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven. How about that? Our Pray then this way. Our Father in heaven. And uh, let us begin with a word of prayer. Lord, I uh, pray that not only would we be uh, hearers of your word, but that we would be doers of your word. And Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation on my heart would be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You know, uh, the very first word that we get into this prayer is our. And the one thing that we can never forget, it is always our. Nowhere in this prayer does it say me. Nowhere in this prayer does it say I. Nowhere is it mine, but it is always ours. And we are, 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 are reminded in a very powerful way what John, what, what God through John has said, God so loved the world. God so loved this world that sometimes to us it seems to be so so far from what it should be. We we see people doing things so far from God's love and goodness. And we see all of the ills that are in this society. And yet we don't really see what God sees. God sees what God intended this world to be. God sees what God intended for you and for me and for every person in this world. And we don't always live up to that mark that God has made for us. But God has never stopped loving every single person who was ever born on this earth. God so loved the world. God did not send the Son, Jesus Christ, to condemn the world, but to lift the world, to bring it to restoration. And in that, God is saying, when you pray, pray our. Pray our. You know, I, the, the, one, to me, if you go to the uh, 10th chapter of Acts, you know, this, this, this is the powerful lesson for me. Besides, well, of course, John 3, 16, sure. But I see the disciples trying to act this out. The disciples trying to make sense out of John 3, 16 which we have to make sense out of it. Here's poor old Peter. He's at the house of Simon the Tanner. And he goes up on the roof to pray. And he's a good Jew. You know, he believes that the Jews are this chosen people, the people who are worthy of God's love, perhaps are the only people worthy of God's love. But as he's up there and he's praying a hot noonday sun, he falls asleep. And he has this vision. And on this vision, this great sheet comes down with all these unclean animals on it. And he is told to take and eat. And he goes, oh, no, I can't do that. I can't take and eat. I've never eaten anything that's unclean. Never taken anything that's unclean. And uh, what does God say? 
God's the vision says to him, what God has made clean, do not profane. What God has made clean, do not profane. What God has created, do not see as unworthy. What God has created, do not see what is unworthy. Oh, I know we wonder at times. We wonder, we shake our heads at the world and the world that's around us. And yet God says, somehow, some way, you have to find the compassion, you have to find the heart, you have to find the spirit that you have seen in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. <laughs> Jesus said, you have to pick up my cross daily. Pick us a, You can't just let it alone. It has to become part of your life, your daily living. To find the our world and to wrap your loving arms around our world. That's the power. It's in prayer. We can do that. We can be at prayer for our world, the entire world. And so if, if we can get that down, there isn't anybody, there is not anybody in all creation who is not worthy for whom Christ has died. For whom Christ has died, no one is unworthy. And think no one unworthy. Think no one unworthy for whom Christ has died. I think I got that out. Okay, we pray our. Who do we pray? Our Father. Wow. We know that, that, that God does not have gender. God is spirit. The Bible is very clear about that. God is spirit. We don't have three gods. We don't have... God, this great Father in heaven that's sitting up there on his throne with a big white beard, stern look on, on his face. We have spirit, the spirit that brought the separation to the waters and everything to the earth, that grew the plants and created human beings and animals. All that's done, but it's done by spirit. God spoke, spirit came out and created and it came out through the Son, Jesus Christ, and goes out into the world who is us, the world. <laughs> that, that's hard to put together, isn't it? This three in one, this great spirit. I, you know, I know when I was a child, I thought of it that way. I thought of God, this stern person on a throne. But you know what? I... I, I uh, the way I put it together for myself, you may maybe this won't mean everything to you was meant to me. But when I when I see this and I, I try to think of God the three in one, you know, I think of, of, of God the great author of everything, the spirit that is the great author of everything. This author of all creation, this author is like the author of a play. The author of a play is like this. It makes this great, wonderful play. This play that, that is so powerful and has so much mystery and just grips you. You don't understand at all. You can't possibly understand all the words the author has written. So the author then has, has this actor to get onto the stage. And take the words, take the spirit of that play and to, and to give it in such a powerful manner that it cannot be missed. And that goes out into the audience. The audience sits there and, and they have never seen anything like this. They've never heard anything like this. They can't, they can't grasp this entire thing that's there before them. They just know the power that it has and how it begins to change them and how they feel like they'll never be the same again because they have witnessed this. They have felt the power of the spirit of the author who has written and the person who has brought this to them. And they go out, they go out into the world never the same. And they're excited and they just want to share this, what they have felt when they had taken in this author's works. And to me, that's easy for me to see that power of that spirit coming through the Son, Jesus, who, who brought us this mystery in such a way 
that we're never the same again. And it gives us a joy that, that has us running out and wanting to share it with others. Father, Son, Holy Spirit is one spirit that we can cherish and that we can hold and then we can have a personal experience with and that we can pray and we can feel that presence. We can, even in our ears, hear the words of God speaking to us through our prayers. That, that's how powerful the Lord's Prayer is. Our Father, our Father in heaven. Whoa! This thing about heaven. Where is this place, heaven? Once again, <laughs> I was a kid. You know, you know how. When, uh, a lot of times, you have all these clouds. The sun is trying to break through the clouds, and as the sun's breaking through the clouds, there's these beams that come out of the clouds, streams of light that come down out of the clouds. You can see them. I used to look up at those clouds and I think in, in my childish way that that is God taking people who died into heaven. That, that's that I don't know how this came into my head, but in my mind, my childish mind, that's what I saw. That's what I saw. God taking people into heaven. Heaven's up there. I, I don't know what this thing heaven is. I just know that the Bible tells me it's so glorious that it goes beyond anything we could possibly, possibly put together. The Bible doesn't leave us with, a, with, with nothing. You go to John 14, and Jesus is saying to his disciples, Hey, I'm going away, but I, I'm going to a place that I am preparing for you. And I'm coming, I'm going to bring you to me. And in this place, there's room for each and every one of you. Each and every one of you as an individual and each and every one of you together. You're there. You're going to be restored to who you were tended to be at the very beginning of creation. You'll be the person God intended you to be. In this place, you're going to share in the glory of God. You're going to share in the love of God in a way that your human mind can never even put together. So whether you live or whether you die, you're going to be walking with God. <laughs> this is the place of heaven. The place where we walk with God. The place where it begins right here on earth. And... Um, so it doesn't matter whether I live or I die. I'm walking with God. And I'm sharing in that kingdom. So it's our, not just mine, but our, the world, our Father. The author of all of creation, who has brought this wonderful world, this wonderful creation to us, but the creation and the kingdom together, and has shared it through Jesus Christ, out into us. And we pray we can carry it into the world. We can take it to all people everywhere. That there'll be nobody, nobody, to whom we won't go to with this message and this love and this peace and this grace and this forgiveness and this compassion. And we share this in a living kingdom, even here on earth, as we will be then taken into this wonderful kingdom that gives us the restoration of who God has intended us to be. I'd like to leave you with a hymn. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All these things will be given to you. So just may God bless us as we begin this series of prayer and may we feel something inside of us that becomes so powerful, even if it's a great mystery, that it's in our hearts and we can share it together. So may God bless us as we listen to the words, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. the key.
king of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto not live by bread alone. Thank you.